I'm Nita. And I'm Sinead. And this week we're talking all about a hook What is a hook It's an animal. Today's weekly videos. This week, as mentioned earlier, we are talking all about the hook fox. Now, what on earth is a hook fox? We get a lot of people saying that to us and going, "Well, because well, you, you know, whenever we sell something, we're like, okay, are you sure you got everything? Do you have this? Do you have that? And if it's a silky pulse or you have purchased, we will go, have you got a hook fox? Do you want the hook fox? And so, yeah, today's all about what on earth is a hook fox and why do I want one? <laughs> So yes, like Unita was saying, it's designed for all silky pole swords. So we have the silky long boy here to demonstrate. Mm. And this here is the hook fox. Yes, so why hook fox? Why is it called a hook fox? <laughs> um, it looks like a hook fox. <laughs> <laughs> totally, to us, we know exactly why. <laughs> so you have the hook, um, yes. but we can see a little fox there with the little eye, the dent, nose, ears and the body. Uh, but also the fox is the symbol of the silky um, logo. Yes, so yeah. basically it is a hook that looks like a fox. Yes. <laughs> and the silky fox is one of the hardest working foxes in the world and hence this is going to be a hard working tool for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, the silky fox is a hard working fox. Mm. So this is what this is designed to do. It's a hard working fox. Yeah. So it's designed to be a maneuvering device. Okay, so if it's a maneuvering device, what are we maneuvering? <laughs> like it's a pole saw, right? We're cutting branches and palm fronds. What are we maneuvering? Yes. <laughs> Seems, but it is designed to, it's helped to assist remove those stubborn or those dead branches out of the oh, tree. so to pull dead branches out. Yeah, especially okay. if you're pruning um, palm fronds. I know. Oh, yes? Yes. Yeah, so if you are cutting a branch and it does fall on another branch and you're like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is designed to just help yank that branch out of the tree. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't I just use my blade because that's kind of shaped like a hook? Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> but being, because the teeth, this is designed, it's a hard, it's a hard steel, correct? Strong. Strong hard steel. So you, and this is a, kind of a soft, softer steel. So if you try to use the blade to always yank those branches out of the tree, eventually you're going to slowly blunt in the teeth on your saw. But if you are moving it in an awkward direction, you could potentially break that blade. Um, so this basically is a blade saver. <laughs> That's right, because the more you bend and flex the blade, you're creating little stress fractures basically in yes. that blade. So then one day when you're using it just normally as you would every other day, it might snap on you. And you'll think, why? I didn't do anything weird, I was just using it normal, but it's probably because you use the blade as a maneuvering device yep. rather than the hook fox, which is specially designed for that purpose. Yes. Because it's much stronger. It is, it mm. is. So yeah, it's basically to help the save um breaking your blade. And price-wise, like something like this is I think in the mid 40s dollar-wise, yeah. yep. whereas a blade can range from 70 to $200 to replace depending on which pole saw you've got. So yes. if you're going to break something, I'd be preferring to break something like that, which yes. is going to be way harder to ever break <laughs> than that. In fact, I think we've been working with Silky now for like me about 19 years and I've never ever seen one broken. I mean, that's not a, that's not a request. <laughs> I'm not saying go out there and try and break your hook box. <laughs> I'm just saying really hard to break. Yeah. Blades not so much. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a maneuvering device, so mm. it's to help to pull out dead branches, palm mm -hmm. fronds, um, or those stubborn branches that aren't quite making it to the ground. Yep. This is what it's designed to do. So, another num so, number, yeah. so number two, so another use for the hook fox is if you are a commercial guy, arborist, mm -hmm. and you're wanting to assist um, the ropes throughout the tree, you can use this part of the hook fox here to help um, lift those ropes up and put them along. Yeah, maybe you're not as good a shot as you'd hoped. Yes. <laughs> and if it's me, it's probably you've totally thrown it <laughs> in the wrong place. So instead of pulling the rope down again and re-throwing it, you could use the hook fox to drag that rope up the branch or down the branch or hook it, like Sinead said, over the little ear of the fox and move yeah. it to a section that you actually want it in. Yes. Because this isn't sharp in any way, so it's not going to damage your rope because the ropes are expensive and they're also your lifeline half the time. So you want to make sure you don't put any compromising nicks in those ropes so the hook fox will safely move that around a tree. Yeah. And also another use for this as well is if you have a jam chainsaw or a jam mm. saw. Yes. I know a few of the guys, they use the hook fox to help 
lift that branch up just so you can pull the chainsaw or Take pull that saw blade. Yeah, yeah. out of that cut. Yeah. Saves any broken blades. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, Actually, there's even a place in Brisbane here, one of the um, Barklands, that has lots of events. So they'll have lots of um, events, festivals, that's the word. <laughs> what are they called? Things where people eat, drink and have fun. Those things. <laughs> My type of place. <laughs> So they often have like catering vehicles that come in or vehicles with big, I don't know, blow up slides for kids to go on, stuff like that. And they're often too tall for things like service wires that um, run across a lot of driveways or entrances to these sorts of parks. So I know they use pole saws with the hook fox to lift those service wires. Now we're not talking power lines, Good just the, the phone cable and those sorts of things. Because this, again, is not going to cut or damage those wires, but it allows them to lift so that the truck's canopies don't hook them on their way in. So quite yes. a handy little little attachment to have. Yes, it mm. is. But um, also, I've spoken to a few people and they use the hook fox to hang once they've finished cutting the tree and they're wanting to do a little bit more work. Mm. Not just yet, they rest the pole saw on a branch using oh, the hook. Oh, I've not heard of that one. Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. Um, it's another way to hang a pole saw. <laughs> Storage. You have your own hook to hang it with. <laughs> yeah. So... Backing up a little bit, number mm -hmm. one, it's a manoeuvring device yes. to help clear those dead branches, palm mm -hmm. fronds, stubborn branches out of the tree yep. without breaking a blade. So use the hook box instead mm -hmm. of your blade. Yes. Uh, number two, it's designed to release the pressure of the branch mm -hmm. of a chainsaw or a saw if yep. it gets jammed and even um, assisting ropes throughout the tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number three was lifting service wires, so not electrical, power lines. But just anything, you know, that's yeah. in the way basically. It could be, you know, you've put fairy lights up because they're just so pretty. <laughs> but, you know, something might be coming through the driveway and for some reason they're going across the driveway or your back patio or whatever. So it allows you to lift things basically. So let's go lifting. Lifting. Lifting, lifting thing. Yes. <laughs> But yes, that is it um, on the back of me. Yeah, so if you went into a store to buy a hook fox, this is what it's going to look like. So you're looking for something like this hanging on a shop's wall. Yep. So on the back of the hook fox packet, it has what each of how it is displayed on each pole saw. So mm. this is what the silky zubat would look like. This is what the silky long boy would look like. This is what your silky forester will look like. This is what your silky Hayate will look like, and this is what your silky Hayachi will look like. So yeah, all great pole saws, and they've all designed to fit on all of the silky pole saws. And it looks slightly different on each of the pole saws as well, because uh, all of the different pole saws have a slightly different bolt sort of setup configuration. Yeah. So your Hayachi, the bolts sort of attach to the narrowest end of the pole saw, whereas the Hayate, they attach to the widest side of the pole. Yeah. Um, so it will look slightly different. And with some of them, you might think, oh, shivers, I don't think this is right. I think it's supposed to go on the other side. But don't despair. Seriously, just follow the pictures on the back of the cardboard because that is the best way to attach it. You don't want it pointing to the sky. You want it pointing to the handle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so in the hook fox, you will have two sets of screws. So one mm. is the longest set and one is the shortest set. So just have a little play depending on what pole saw you have. And a little slide um, straight through the sides here. So yeah, it's all a bit different. So depending on which pole saw is to whether or not you need the nuts or the washers or whether you just need the screw in the nuts. Yep. Or washes, sorry, you need the washes every time. But yeah, you know what we mean. They're all yes. a bit different. So have a play, but not all four go on one pole, so you only need two. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is we're going to take the hook fox off the long boy pole saw and put it on for you, just so you have a rough idea of how to put the hook fox on and off your blade, off your saw, sorry. <laughs> so I have my hook fox and I have my silky long boy. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide the hook fox over the long boy, over the two um, little screw bits here. So it is quite a firm fit, so make sure it is nice and tight on. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your screw and then you're going to have your split washer and your normal washer. And you're going to pop it through the little, little hole and screw it in. So this will pop out on the other side of the pole saw. So that is what first one that's locked up. You gotta do the same with the other side. And then you're gonna get your little nut and you're gonna pop it on the back. Grab your nut on that and pop it on the back. 
So that is now locked on. So you don't need the other screws for this this time around. This so these two screws will hold the hook fox um, to the pole and also the blade to the pole as well. Okay, so that's the hook fox on the long boy down dusted. Now, if you have a Hayate, so this is the blade for a Hayate pole saw, and these are the screws that come with the Hayate pole saw. So what you want to do is remove those screws. So we'll pop them out. Under pressure, you can never make your fingers work as fast as you want them to. We're watching. <laughs> then get your hook box. Now, with the hook box, you'll notice there's like a sort of a molded section on the side here that looks very much like it wants to go over something. Now, if you don't have a hayate, don't stress out because a lot of the pole saws, this goes on a section that doesn't have anything that it slides over. So a lot of people go, oh no, it must go on the other side because there's nuts on that side or, you know, it looks like it should go over something. Make sure you just stick to the picture on the back of the cardboard because the hayate is one of the few pole saws that these little sort of molded sections actually do in fact go over something. So what they're going to slide over are these nuts that are actually welded to the pole itself. Um, well, what is that? It's my pipe, isn't it? It's not a pole, it's a pipe. <laughs> so again, make sure your hook is pointing toward the handle and then slide it over that pipe and over those nuts. And that will go on really quite firmly. Like you can see that's quite jammed on there now. It's not going to fall off. And then those same um, screws that Sinead used with the long boy are what you're going to use with the high arte. So again, you just slide those screws through the holes um, and through to the other side and use your split washers and uh, you're good to go. Yes, so I was being lazy and I wasn't going to put the uh, screw in, but I have done it now. So it's all good. So this is showing you the screw's gone through with your washer and your split washer and then you can see the other bit of thread coming out the other side so that's where you would put the nut on. So when attaching the hook fox to your Hayate you would use all of the, the two screws, the split washer, the normal washer, obviously it comes twice, and the nut when attaching the hook fox to your Hayate. Have a Hayachi pole saw. This is the blade that a Hayachi pole saw standard comes with. Um, so you get your head off the uh, pole, take the screw off. Remembering again, your hook fox is always pointing to the handle, in this case to the sky, but you know the pole would be attached to the end, so the handle's this way. Hook fox slides on this end, and what you want to do is with the Hayachi, it's a little bit unusual. You have the hole here for the button that's in the pot in the pole. Then you have the center hole here, and that's where this screw normally attaches. But in this case, because we're attaching the hook box, you want the other silver screws, not the ones we use for the Hayate or the Longboy, the other ones. And they're going to go through these other two holes here that look like they're all lonely until you have yourself a wonderful little hook box. So through these two holes is where the screws are going to go. And then you'll find the hook fox has, whoop, put it down there, has um, these welded nuts in the end sort of hiding under the fox's little feet. And that is to hold the screws in place when you're attaching to your high arches. So on the top part of the pipe, hook fox pointing toward the handle, and then your screws go in this direction and then screw into these nuts and held nice and tight. Thanks for watching one of our videos this week. We hope you enjoyed learning all about the hook fox. The hook fox. Yes, <laughs> you'll be able to find it on our website. It's a very easy pet to look after. It is. Low maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> if you already have a pole saw, don't forget to get a hook box. Very if important. If you are purchasing a pole saw or wanting to purchase a pole saw, don't forget to add the hook fox to it. It is very important to have when... Super handy little guy to have in the shed just in case. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We hope you have a fantastic week. If you like the video and you haven't already, please subscribe and leave us a comment and um, anything else you want to know of within the ATC products range. And if you don't know where that is, jump on our website, arbalab.com.au um, and let us know and then we can make a video about that. But that's it for us this week. Sounds good. I hope you enjoy your week. Bye. Bye.